Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome to officially episode one of Let's Make a Game Bullet Hell. So I am going to go and create myself a new blank GML project. This is going to be... I said during episode zero, which was the, uh, the, project, the project planning episode, that if I could think of a name for this between then and when I sat down to actually do episode one, I would call the, the project that, but I was not. It's probably going to be a dumb insect pun or something, but for now, uh, L mag, L mag bullet hell, and let's go. Okay, I am using for this, if you want to, uh, to do anything along the lines of following along, let me get rid of all this junk here. I am using for this uh, one of the GameMaker 2.3.7 um, betas. Uh, probably later on, I will just stick with the, uh, the stable releases, but there are some features in this current 2.3.7 beta that I want to possibly make use of, uh, specifically Nullish Coalescence. I don't know if I'll actually really need to do that, but um, should I want to do that, I do want to, uh, to have access to it, so today I'll be on the beta. So, project management. Um, I said that I would be, uh, I would be following this, this, uh, this hack and plan plan that I wrote out a couple weeks ago, and I'm gonna do that. Um, not 100% on the order in which I'll be taking out these cards, but it'll be approximately the, uh, the order that they're listed here. So let's start at the beginning. Let us create ourselves a player object. And did I write any details here? I did not. All right. Um, if you have not seen the, uh, the project management episode, I, you might be interested in, uh, in going and doing that. I am going to call this, uh, and player. And this is, a a player is eventually going to be part of a whole family of entity objects, uh, so I'm going to prefix it with ENT. But first, let me go create myself a sprite. Um, let us call this SPR player. I will organize this resource tree later. Uh, edit image, I'm just going to make you a yellow square. Like that. And we can actually give you a nice graphic later. For the time being, do not care. Let's, let's middle center you. Let's give you the sprite. And let us, um, in the step event, uh, I could say self.x is going to equal, let's make the font size bigger, uh, mouse x. Actually, this should really be window mouse get x. Actually, wait. No, it will be mouse x. Because I am making a 2D game and not a 3D game, because that's unusual. Uh, self.x equals mouse x, self.y equals mouse y. Uh, this is the, uh, the coordinates of the mouse in the actual room. So, I'll deal with, uh, with the visual setup later. Let's first drag the player onto here and run the game. This is like the Hello World equivalent of a Game Maker project, is making a, a yellow square follow the mouse cursor around. Okay, cool, we have interaction. Um, let's see. Do I want to do, like, movement now? I guess I might as well. So, let's, uh... First, when the game starts, when the, uh, the player is created, they can be set to the mouse XY. But also, I'm going to define, um... Uh, player movement speed. And let's call this... Oh god. Um, let's call this, like, 2 for now. And... Let's see, is move towards point do what I think it does? Move... Move towards point. I am 90% sure move towards point does what I think it does. And that is... Um, move towards a point um, at a set speed. It is up to you to tell it what to do once it gets there, as it won't just stop by itself. Okay. Yeah, that does what I think it does. So, uh, we can say if point, and we'll, uh, we'll get rid of that. If po uh, point distance between self.x, self.y, mouse x, mouse y is less than um, self.move movement speed, self.movement speed, then uh, self.x is going to equal mouse x, self.y equals mouse y, else uh, move towards the point. And uh, the point is going to be mouse x, mouse y at the 
itself that movement speed and that should cause the player to uh, move towards the mouse cursor instead of just always being there okay that that's great fabulous It's doing the vibrating thing, huh? That should be... It shouldn't it shouldn't be able to... It should just stop when we get there if we automatically check the point distance. Okay, there we go. So less than or equal, I guess, was the uh, the important part. Perfect. So uh, I should probably, at this point, make a GitHub repository for this uh, this project, shouldn't I? Uh, open project in Explorer. I did not actually do this. Git init. And we will go to uh, GitHub desktop, add local repository. I'm not going to push this to actual GitHub right now. I will do that once I actually, uh, once I actually start releasing these videos. Uh, regardless, I can just commit everything can I can I commit this in pieces? Should probably uh for example uh commit the base game maker project first. Uh resources is just gonna be that. Okay, yeah. I've recently learned that you can actually uh select individual lines to commit in uh and get a desktop desktop. That's pretty cool. This can be base project. Um next we will commit uh, the actual the actual content, and I can call this something like player setup. All right, great. So I can move over to hack and plan. I can uh, I can move this over to completed. Really, sure. I'm not really. The points are just an arbitrary value. This isn't a a time an amount of time that it took me to do anything or anything like that. This is just my estimate for like relative to each of the other tasks. How how much work any given task is going to be. Um, it's completely possible that some of these, uh, some of these tasks are finished in like 30 seconds, uh, if they turn out to be very similar to something that's already been done, or it, it's very possible that they could take a lot longer, it's just, it's just an estimate. I'm not super concerned on, um, by the actual values. Um, let's see, I guess also, I will, the things that I plan on doing today, I can move to the in-progress board. Uh, which is definitely going to be create a bullet class. Uh, player shoots bullets forward when they click. Bullets despawn off screen. Uh, player bullet shooting cooldown. Player bullet spread. And if I can get farther than that, hopefully, I'm hoping that I can at least do some enemy things um, after that. But we'll start with uh, we'll start with the bullet items. Okay. So uh, let's call this. Do I want? Uh, bullets to inherit from an entity also? Not really. Um, let me... Where's object? Let's call that bullet. Let's make ourselves a nice little sprite. SPR bullet. Uh, this can be a much smaller thing than, um, than the player sprite. This is just going to be, I think, 8 by... Not 89, 8 by 8. And I'm going to make this like a white circle. Uh, which should stand out decently well against the black background. And center at the origin. And give the uh, the bullet object a sprite. And let's say that when, in the step event, when the player, if um, mouse check button mb underscore left, uh, if you click the left mouse button, actually I'll make this press so that it's not done continuously, uh, instance create uh, depth self dot x self dot y uh, depth is plus one would put you in the background right make make the bullet appear beneath me instead of above me um, the instance layer is at depth zero the bullet layer the background layer is at depth hundred so yeah if I if I say um, draw the bullet at my depth plus one it'll appear beneath me uh, and the object will be uh, bullet. This will not do anything on its own. This will just create a bullet where I am. So as I, um, as I walk, as I float towards me and as I click, we will be creating a trail of bullets that does not move behind me. 
That's fine. I'm going to bump up the player movement speed a little bit. Let's make that 10, just because it annoys me how slow it is. Um, regardless, I can commit this. That's better. That's more like it. Okay. I can commit this. Uh, next, let's give this thing some behavior. I am going to um, define an uh, self dot. Is x speed built in? Is it h speed? Okay, I guess it is. H speed and V speed are built in. Do I want to use H speed and V speed? I do not because that'll take control away from me and that'll have these things behave on their own, which I may necessarily not like. Uh, so I'm going to say self dot H speed is going to equal, um, X speed rather, is going to equal zero and self dot Y speed is going to equal, um, let's say four, negative four because I want it to move up the screen. And then um, in the step event, uh, self dot x plus equals self dot x speed, self dot y plus equals self dot y speed. It is really weird to not have to worry about a, uh, a z coordinate anymore. This should have the move. Okay, so we, we have bullets. Uh, they will move up the screen when I click. I still feel like the player moves a little bit slower than I'd really like. And uh, these the bullets also move a little bit slower than I'd really like. Um, let's see. Obviously, different types of bullets will move in different ways. Uh, this is just very rudimentary, just so that we have something happening now. Let's bump the player movement speed up to 12. Uh, also, instead of mouse check button press, let's mouse check button so that you can actually hold the mouse button down and just continuously fire. Um, like that. All right, that looks cool. The bullets now move. Um, let's see, create a bullet class, that's done. Uh, yeah, whatever, thank you. Uh, player shoots bullets forward when they click. That's also done, actually. Uh, next, bullets despawn off screen. So currently, once you shoot a bullet, it's just gonna exist forever, even if it's not on the screen. Uh, the data will still be there. Um, I will, I will check in the step event to see if the bullet is off the screen. So if uh, self dot x is greater than room width plus um, sprite width, which I really should be, I guess should be sprite width divided by two um, because uh, because the, the sprite is centered at the origin. Anyway, if uh, we are uh, off the uh, off the screen to the right or uh, self dot x is less than room. I mean, it should, yeah, it, it's it's zero. No room width. Um, negative sprite width over two. So if we're off the screen on the left side, or self dot y is greater than room height plus sprite height divided by two, or self dot y is less than negative sprite height divided by two, uh, then show debug message off screen and we are going to instance destroy ourselves there is no elegant way to align this is there anyway uh once these bullets travel off screen in any direction although the only way they can move off screen currently is to the top uh, we should be seeing that off-screen message popping up there, destroyed. I can get rid of that debug message. I can commit this change. Um, bullets die when they go off-screen. I will organize this code much more nicely later. Um, I will probably move this to a uh, to a, an instance method called something like, I don't know, check off-screen or something like that later on. But for now, I want to burn through as many. I just accidentally opened my email client. I just want to burn through as many of these uh, these cards as possible. So yes, we can finish that one. Okay. Apparently I did not accidentally open my email client. Anyway, player bullet shooting cooldown. So we should, uh, this is gonna be a little bit more lines of code than any of the previous uh, items in this task list was. Um, let's say that you can only shoot four bullets per second. So self.bullet cooldown is gonna equal uh, 0.25 seconds between um. Actually, you know, let's call this uh, the inverse of that. Shots per second can be uh, equal to four. Um, I will keep a uh, a little variable that is self dot 
uh, last shot time is going to equal, let's call this zero. Yeah, why not? Let's say when you click the left mouse button, um, if, uh, if this is true and if uh, self.last shot time is less than or equal to, let's say get timer, actually wait, uh, is less than or equal to current time is a value that's built into Game Maker for, uh, for purposes of timing. This is the number of uh, milliseconds since the game has started. That should be good enough for, uh, for us. So we can say uh, current time divided by 1000 because it's, it's milliseconds plus um, one over self.shots per second. Uh, then we can shoot. Uh, we can then set self.last, I am talking too fast, uh, last shot time equal to uh, current time divided by a thousand, so we can update that value. And that should only allow us to fire off four shots per second. So I'm gonna hold the mouse button down and that is not the case. Okay, cool. What's going on? Uh, last shot time. Is this a, is this a sensible way of looking at it? Should I instead say last shot time plus uh, the inverts of shots per second? is less than the uh, current second of the game. That might be a more sensible way of doing this. Okay, there we go. All right, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. So we're only firing four shots per second. That's actually rather slow, I think. Let me, let me, let me count that off. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, yeah, that's four shots per second. Let's make this more like 10. This will be about every six frames. All right, that looks better. Perfect. So, uh, let's see. Player bullet shoot cooldown. I can move this over to closed. And lastly, player bullet spread. So I want a little bit of random variation in the angle that uh, shots come out of the player. It's not gonna be much. Um, I'm going to define myself self.bullet spread is going to be like 10 degrees or so. Uh, this is where we're going to get into uh, setting the uh, setting the bullets properties when it's actually created instead of in its create event, um, allowing different things to shoot bullets in different ways. Um, so let's see, I can say var shot equals instance create depth. Um, let's say var shot velocity equals, what did I set it to? Negative six. Um, all right, so the velocity is gonna be, let's make it 10, let's make it a little faster. Uh, our shot angle is going to be, um, let's say 90 because that's uh, that's up on the screen in Game Maker, game maker angles, uh, plus random range. Um, negative self dot, what did I call it? Bullet spread? Yeah, uh, negative self dot bullet spread divided by two, uh, self dot bullet spread divided by two, and therefore shot dot uh, x speed is going to equal the um, shot velocity times degree cosine of uh, shot angle, and shot dot y speed is gonna be negative, Let's space this out so that these code, these lines of code look the same, a shot velocity times d sine shot angle. Okay. This should allow bullets to uh, to both move straight up, plus have a little bit of spread. Perfect. Okay. Ten degrees actually looks pretty close to what I had in my head. Um, all right. That's very nice. Um, player bullet spread. So we've got a decent amount of gameplay going here. This is a rather Rather to the contrary of Bombardier, where I started out with like building the technology and the renderer and stuff, and and then moved on to gameplay. Here I'm doing the opposite. Let's see. I've only been recording for about 20 minutes, but I don't want this to go on for too long. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think I'll end it off here. So let me go into the uh, the GitHub repository. Tag this as a release. This is going to be 0 0.1. Um, next time we're going to be dealing with enemies, and hopefully we're going to get a lot of a lot of enemy code done. I might try to record the next couple of videos on on today as well, uh, as in um, 
like before I really I really start thinking about posting these videos because I want to again have a few of these under my belt before I do the uh, the post mortem for Bombardier. We'll see. If you want to see the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. If you want to use this as a base for any project of your own, uh, feel free. Uh, credit would be appreciated, so on and so forth. Don't like use this code base to commit any federal crimes or anything like that, obviously. Uh, let me just quickly go back to the project dashboard and uh, see a nice 3% points progress towards this com the completion of this game. Okay, so I'm, I'm on track for having this done in about 30 videos and 4% um, progress towards the uh, the work items done. We'll see how w we'll see how well we can keep that up. Anyway, if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there will be links to that to a Patreon in the video description. You could see some fun things like your uh, your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end. See a preview of my future plans, that kind of thing. Otherwise, I hope you all found this interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Then Nothing Happened, Square Crow, Cinder Larson, Post Show, Gunnar Clovis, Game Maker, Emily Coyo, Edward Holt, DJGBLZ, and Army Armbruster for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end like this, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.